are so excited to be here today at Equine Affair with the Equus Film and Arts Festival. I'm with an organization called Who's and and I'm with an organization, two organizations, Horses for Mental Health and the other one is Arenas for Change. And we have some wild stories. <laughs> so, we had a wild story getting here, that's yeah. for sure. Should we talk about our story getting here? Okay. Okay. We can have the I, story think, getting here. I think this is how we can set the theme for our yeah. conversation. <laughs> Manifesting. Yes. <laughs> and be very always be very careful what you say because words matter. Yep. But we were on our way up from or we were on our way down to Columbus from Toledo. And the horse trailer I have is quite old, and I was kind of feeling like, Ugh, I don't want to roll up to Equine Affair, this prestigious event, in some hunk of junk horse trailer. And just as I was telling Lynn how I hate the horse trailer and really need a new one, Janelle, our associate director who is driving behind us, calls my phone and says, the back of your trailer just blew off on the highway. Pull over now. And that led to a series of very divine events where Lynn got on the internet and found a trailer place a couple miles down the road. That was closed. It said it was closed because <laughs> it was like 6.30 at night yeah. and I was like, oh, well, no one's going to probably answer. And thank God you called anyway. I, I don't know if I would have thought. I, well, I, I hesitated because I was like, well, it's closed. I'm sure no one would be there. It's an hour and a half past closing time. Um, but I was like, well, it can't hurt to try. And sure enough, they picked up amazing Cecil from um, um, Stam Stamford Trailers yeah. in Marion, Mary, I think it was Marion, Ohio. Marion, Ohio. Uh, amazing. Best trailer people ever. <laughs> Very grateful. They, he totally answered, and apparently he's just a small business owner, passionate about trailers, and he an always answers his phone, <laughs> even if it's 2 in the morning, his wife said. Yeah. So I was like, wow, that was amazing. Absolutely. And, said do you rent trailers do you have any way you know help and he's like no and usually we don't have but tell you say what happened yeah now. so we so he was like i just happen to have this 16 foot stock trailer which is exactly what we were calling was a 16 foot stock trailer so he was like yes i have one you know it's this much money which was a afford very affordable and we're like okay let's do it and Again, through divine intervention, Janelle happened to have some ratchet straps that her husband randomly put in her SUV. Like, why would you need ratchet straps in an SUV? And so we ratcheted the door back on, girl power, and got to the trailer place. And we roll up, and it is literally, guys, the exact same trailer that I have that is, like, falling apart of rust. It is the same trailer. Yeah. And we... But <laughs> shiny. But brand new. And bright red. And not shiny. embarrassing. Very shiny. Red. Same color. Red, that is the hooves. Amanda's program. Our brand is. color. Your brand color. Yeah. Like, tell me that's not manifesting at its finest. And they said they never have these trailers on lot because when they get them, they're immediately gone. And this just was one of those yeah. moments where they happen to have a and trailer. And they have two lots, and it just happened to be at this other lot that they just bought. Like, they didn't even have this lot a month ago. I think they, she's like, we just bought this lot. So, again, uh, we are so powerful, and our words are so powerful. And I think... You know, there's destiny and there's manifestation, and I think it it just plays such a role in, especially when you have a purpose, right? And I know, Lynn, your purpose started years ago, and I, I was so fascinated to hear your story and how you got into uh, incorporating horses into mental health. Do you want to share a little bit about what that, how that started? Well, yeah, and I think my story fits also with, I think, the other lesson of this experience was be careful what you ask for. So that's the other lesson. You will always get it, and it will never look like what you think it what should. Think it's and it usually comes with pain and torture. Uh, I was like, Amanda, you just said you wanted this other trailer. Well, okay, but amazing. A it was actually miracle after miracle, really, what happened. 
So very grateful and yeah, same kind of with my story. I actually don't have a background with horses and um, I so I went to a Girl Scout camp, did one week horse camp. That's the extent of it. And I got involved with horses at a program for troubled youth and saw the power that horses brought. I did wilderness programs. I love nature. I love experiential. I love anything types of hands-on to improve our mental health, change our lives, our well-being overall. And um, saw what the horses did, and I was amazed. And that put me on a path that little did I know my whole life for the next 25 years would be devoted to horses and how they can impact mental health. So I um, ended up uh, co-founding an organization called the Gala, Equine Assisted Growth and Learning Association, and uh, built that, and that was focused on training and certifying professionals in um, incorporating horses for mental health. And that became a global organization, and that was an amazing journey. Met a lot of wonderful people, learned a lot, evolved a lot. And so that um, in 2021, broke off and did a new, some new projects, and that's what I'm um, really excited now, Arenas for Change, which is focused a little more on, one, the learning being really accessible. We want everybody to be able to have a chance to learn these skills on how to incorporate horses, as well as nature and animals in general, to benefit mental health, personal growth. Um, and so we provide some courses in that in a, com a wonderful community where we learn together, push each other, challenge each other's beliefs, and, and really just kind of keep our own personal growth, you know, being examples of what we're trying to help others. And then um, Horses for Mental Health, which is a nonprofit organization with a, a dream of how can we get the word out there about the benefit horses have for mental health around the world, where people think, I mean, no, people who don't even know about horses don't think about horses, but they think, I'm having struggles, or my family members or friends are having struggles with mental health, we ought to find a program that involves horses. So started both of these organizations in 2021. So my my life continues to be devoted to the power that horses have in our lives, which is just kind of funny because nowhere did I ever think that that was the path I would be on, you know, like in my yeah. life. And yet here I am and meeting amazing people like you, which well, has been so funny how we got connected. It's, so. it's been incredible, you know, and I just have to say, like, I... I mean, you really are a pioneer. Like, the industry would not be what it is if you wouldn't have had this moment. And I know we podcasted together, but I didn't ask you this question yet, but it's just out of curiosity now. Like, do you have, was there like a moment where you were like observing, because you were at the youth camp, like, was there a, a specific moment where you saw a child working with a horse and you were like, whoa, this is like, could be a thing? Or was it just kind of cumulative over time? It really was more cumulative because it was more like, I'm seeing and I'm hearing, because I wasn't always involved with it myself. I was doing these wilderness programs and all these other stuff. But I was um, seeing how it was impacting, and I would see a session, and it would be like, whoa, what just happened in one hour? Nothing like that happens in one hour. So you saw the accelerated yes. results yes. of horses. Yes, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. So I yeah. Like and, and also, you know, I mean, we get so many people that come through the program that are like, I have literally tried everything. I've tried psychotherapy, medication, mm -hmm. you know, going into the jungle, whatever. Like, crazy. People go to crazy lengths to find healing and then they find it in a horse. And sometimes they find it in an hour. Sometimes they find it in a moment, right? Yeah. I think the magic of horses is the moments that they create. Uh, but I, it is profound and I learned about Igala, so that was actually, Igala is what started my journey. We've kind of evolved and, and moved past that, but in the beginning it was like, I was starting to notice when I moved back from Colorado Springs, Ohio, I was working with, I was a horse trainer, and I just, sometimes we just attract these demographics, right? So the demographic I was getting was business women who had, maybe were like high-powered executives um, or business owners, and they, as little children, they were like, oh, I'd love to have a horse, but I can't afford it. And now, they're in these financial positions where they can't afford a horse, so they go out and they purchase one, and then in a very short time, that horse is like trying to kill them, or they're having major behavioral problems, and I had kind of branded myself as like a, I used to say I'm like a relationship coach or therapist between a horse and their human. And so I started 
started to notice that the horses were really overpowering these high-powered women. And I'm like, well, what's that about? These women are executives, you know? But as we say, like, the horses will reflect our repressions. There's always things deep inside. So all I was doing was teaching horsemanship to these women who had purchased horses and, and then started to notice that, you know, they were showing up like, oh, I'm handling my employees better. Like, I have, I'm more confident as a leader or I'm communicating better or um, I'm managing my children better or my, my husband's treating me differently. Like, you know, so I thought maybe I was on to something, but I didn't know. And then I met someone who told me about a gala and I was like, oh, it's already a whole thing. How cool is that? And I think there's a lot of people like that that start out with like, okay, this is special, but I don't really know what is, is about it. So you like really created a framework for people to go into that and make a career out of it. And I know that it's deeply influenced and impacted where I'm at today. Um, you know, so really, I got I totally fangirled Lynn. So we met. Fast forward to 2022 December Equus Film and Arts Fest, and Lisa tells me Lynn Thomas is going to be there, and I'm like, Oh my god, what do I say to her? Oh my gosh! And we met over the charcuterie tray. <laughs> I'm like, Hi, I'm Amanda. I've been to a lot of your trainings, and I think it is like word vomited all over you. And you were so kind. I can't imagine what was going through your head, but. It was so inspiring to just like, I mean, I have such a deep respect and appreciation for you, and then to like You're very be very there, sweet. and then we found out that our four-minute documentary trailer won the Horses for Mental Health Award, which I didn't even know the award existed, and all the awards were given out, and I was like, oh, this is great, and then Lynn came to the front and was like, oh, we have this additional special award. Came with a cash prize, which was really awesome. Well, and that was what's neat about this work is the connections and how things kind of unfold and how people meet people. So I was at the Equus Film and Arts Fest because Lisa Dearson, who founded this wonderful organization, contacted me. She saw a press release about the campaign that we do through Horses that we started last year, Horses for Mental, to amplify awareness of the power of horses for mental health. So we're doing this annual campaign for that. She saw the press release, reached out to me. You know, I was like, wait, I know you. We know (laughs) each other, right? From from Robbie Gala, from our time there. And so we started talking about how our visions align about getting the message out there. And so we looked at how we could, um, you know, get, you know, work together. And I said, she invited me to the film festival and then this idea of doing an award. And she goes, yeah, all these wonderful submissions of film and video that are, that have mental health messages. And I said, that's amazing. I would love to be able to recognize that, acknowledge these um, organizations that are getting the word out there through video. So we said, let's do this prize. We'll offer a cash prize for it. And I got to watch all these wonderful films. And there was many, many wonderful film submissions that had a uh, horses and mental health theme to it. And we chose the film submission by Hooves, Amanda <laughs> Hell. And um, I didn't know, I didn't recognize your name. Yeah. I didn't know who you were. I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> no, that's but good. You know, that's like, fine. Back then, you wouldn't. I didn't. And so I was really excited to go to the film festival and get to meet who you guys were because the documentary trailer, it's just the trailer, and it's absolutely amazing. It's so beautifully made. And um, it was so wonderful to connect and get to meet you. And now our paths have continued to cross, you know, through different types of events. And yeah, your amazing cross trek across the country. <laughs> so you can share about, yeah, yes. about that. So the film festival brought many things. And one of those things was a tour into the um, prison program that they had in Sacramento. And while we were out there, they had these uh, Mustang yearlings that were overflow. They didn't get adopted. So they got put into the the prison program but they were kind of on the back burner because there was like 30 other three and four year olds and uh, there was a really special moment where my husband who's not a horse person hung behind and he sometimes listens to what I tell other people so he was implementing some of the breath work stuff that I teach with horses and one of the horses came up and connected with him and touched his hand and you say like when a wild horse picks you you got to get that horse <laughs> 
So what started with a simple hand touch turned into, let's start a program where veterans can gentle wild Mustangs because we have a lot of Mustangs in our program, but they're Mustangs that I had personally trained and gentled. So this is just an added layer. I mean, it, and it's such a profound experience to gentle a wild horse. So uh, we ended up deciding to go back to Ohio, get a truck and trailer, and trek all the way across the country to go pick up these four wild horses and bring them home. And it was its own experience in and of itself, but <clears throat> I think one of the things that I've learned in being in this industry in 15 years is that you nobody can do it alone, and we're so much more powerful through collaboration and everything that you give, again, you know, universal law, you, anything that you give out, you receive back, you know. So I thought, well, how can we capitalize on this experience and not just help the Hoops program, but help other programs as well and create awareness for mental health, the crisis with veterans, the crisis with wild horses. So we blew it up into a national campaign road trip and um, Lisa uh, Dearson of Equus helped us kind of navigate our, and connect with people. So she was like calling people days ahead of time that had programs and Lynn was part of that. So Lynn actually got us an opportunity to speak at the uh, Salt Lake VA, which was super powerful. And now we're actually working with the VA and we're going to conduct some research. So she introduced us to Bill and he's phenomenal. Just again, so many things are smiling out of Yeah, it worked out neat because when you said, oh, we're going to come through there and is there a way to do a presentation specifically with veterans? And I just reconnected with Bill. Marshawn, wonderful psychiatrist with the VA in Salt Lake City, does a lot of research, a big advocate, and supporter of this work, and so he was so generous with all his time to help us put together this wonderful presentation with staff from the Veterans Administration. So, yeah, so yeah. he got us there, and then he ended up, we were beneficiaries of the Pirelli uh, Wild Horse Taming event, and Bill had bought tickets to that too. So he was there, and we got to spend some additional time with Bill when we were at the World Equestrian Center. And that's when we came up with this idea to conduct a study this summer and get some more, collect some more data on how, how horses are helping veterans. So it is. I love this net, the network, the interconnection. I love what you said. Yeah, you can't do this alone. You can't. It's I really, I mean, that's what horses teach us too, right? Like, we really, we're better when we're doing together, right? Absolutely. Um, you have to have a herd. Yeah. So it's been cool to see just how our lives go and when you have a passion, because certainly it takes a passion, because I know with your program, with Hooves, maybe you can tell a little bit of your story about how you started and why and what keeps you going. <laughs> When you're roaming horses, especially, it's a lot of challenges, but a lot of rewards. Right? Absolutely, so, absolutely. Yeah, it's you know, I think, and that was one of the things when I was on the the campaign and I was stopping at all these uh, places that were helping veterans and they had horse programs. Like we're, I started to like realize that we're we're all very similar in that we like we can't. Like from the moment that you experience that first healing between horse and human, you're done. Like you can't walk away from it. You will dedicate your entire life to continue. Because what else are you supposed to do when you know that you can facilitate that experience for the horse and the human? Like you're just, I don't know. But um, there are many times that I have wanted to give up. But if we go back to like divine intervention, <laughs> and I, I was just telling someone about this the other day, it's not that hard anymore because we are established. But it took 12 years, and there were many, many times where it's like we take two steps forward, and then I, it would feel like 10 steps back. And I, I used to always like I would go to the shower to cry about how hard this was, and, and I, 
not like I have days where I'm like today's the day that I'm gonna quit I am done this is not reasonable it's not attainable mm -hmm. and I would go to the shower and cry and then I would get out and I would always have a text message like from somebody in the program that was like so I remember like and it's been like years since this has happened but like the last time I remember vividly when it happened I was like oh, I'm done it's, I can't do this I don't know how we're gonna get money for hay and I got out of the shower and um, it was the wife of one of the veterans that had come through and, and he had struggled so deeply with anger and nothing was helping with his anger and it was his, his wife had texted me and she was like I mean like you've transformed my husband and you know, I was like, well, we don't take credit we don't do anything we just create the space for it to be done but she was like you know thank you so much for everything that the program has done like I feel like I have my husband back well and those are the things that keep you going and, and I was like oh well yeah. okay never mind everything I just said uh, how then it, you know then it becomes not how can I quit it's okay how can we figure it out because you know that there are more people that are not going to be okay if you don't keep doing what you're doing. And, you know, I don't know. Maybe that's insanity. Maybe that's divine intervention. I'm not always sure what to call it. But I just always go back to, like, we get one life. We have one life. We all know how we're leaving. There's no mystery in that. So why, like, why not just do everything you can to have impact? It's, yeah. What else is there? I don't know. Well, I think I, I was reading some about the, the life and the day of an entrepreneur, which really when we're building businesses that incorporate horses to help people, we're entrepreneurs. And basically a, a day in the life of an entrepreneur is, yay, I'm so excited for the day. Oh, why am I doing this? This is horrible. Yay, this is. I'm so passionate about this. Oh, I'm in the depths of despair. <laughs> I want to quit. I hate my life. It's oh, so wait. And it's actually like that daily. So, yeah. But I, I have experienced the same thing as you where I literally, and I always call it the depths of, for me, I'm like, I'm in the depths of despair. Why am I doing this? <laughs> what, what is wrong with and me? Then, and then something happens that reminds me why. And you have, we have to have that passion. I, I don't think we would keep going without that passion. Um, and it's worth it. The it's the reward. It is. It's, it's, it's incredible. I mean, ultimately, I don't think I would want to do anything else. Well, I've had the opportunity to do some other, uh, anything else. And I come back and doing this because for punishment. No, because of the rewards. It's amazing. We're, it's transforming lives in a way that nothing else I've experienced does. So Absolutely. Yeah. And I think the next, like, the next journey you're on, like, again, you're, you're back in the industry in a different form, but this is the form that I think is needed now. Um, you know, we've talked about, like, you know, there's, there's processes and then there's frameworks. And I think, you know, we're evolving as humans. We're evolving mentally, physically, emotionally. And I think collaboration, like, I think collaboration is the future. We, we come, you know, competition is really becoming archaic. Yeah. And, you know, realizing that everybody has, like, this tiny piece of the puzzle, and that's great. Our little puzzle pieces are great, but like when you connect them with other puzzle pieces, like the more pieces, the more power, and the more healing, and the more that we serve humanity on a high level. Yeah. And you get to share that, you know, just just in like the past, well, since December, since being a part of Equus, like I didn't realize how siloed I was in my little tiny town in Northwest Ohio, but. I didn't really have anyone else that was trying to do similar things or going through similar things, so I always just felt so alone. And then I like told Lisa, "We I found my people in Equus because we are, we all have the bug, and we're all collaborative, and we all want to have massive impact for horses and humans, and it's a game changer. Like you cannot do this alone, and." You know, sometimes, and, and, but we have to find our herds that align. Right? Yeah. You have to find the right yeah. herd. Yeah, the, val that the values, the values align. align. And share that focus of belief and collaboration. Yeah. And, and when you do find that, it's actually way more fun. Way more fun. Way more fun, way more gratifying. When you find that herd, your herd, 
that you can work together, uplift one another, learn from each other, get out of our ruts, you know, push each other, yeah, you know, to be better. And and I don't know, it's been so fun. I it truly I wanna, has. Can I share about the campaign then? Maybe that's a good. Please, yeah, that, I think that's, that's a, a good great thing. segue. Or I wanted to get our little about our campaign that's coming up, which is about um, raising awareness and about supporting programs because you guys sacrifice a lot. We were talking about it takes a lot to to do these programs to keep them going, and it benefits people so tremendously that we want to find ways to keep supporting the work you wonderful programs are doing. Um, and so one is raising awareness in a bigger bigger way, and the second is to help your programs raise money to provide the services so we started this annual campaign again one of those things that like is this dream gonna happen is this gonna actually happen and because of these wonderful partnerships connections partnered with equine network wonderful group uh, media company event company um, and then they connected us to the title sponsors so us who decided to take a risk and jump in and try out this idea that was foreign like whatever like what are you doing we don't get it um, because nothing like this has ever been done in the equestrian industry and really it is about can we all come together and get out the same message at the same time about how powerful this is and when we do it together we're more powerful absolutely and then other people want to join us so yeah. we got celebrities and influencers Randy Travis other actors country singers equestrian champions like joining in and saying hey everybody look at this support these programs this is a great cause we're in a mental health crisis in our world and what can we do to help each other be stronger so I wanted to show this I'm not sure where I'm pointing here exactly but um, <laughs> these are um, the partners too that have gotten involved and these are all you know big organizations major organizations in this sector right we have American Horse Council who does the legislative support and lobbying and the American Psychological Association section on human animal interaction we have they're involved arenas for change black in the saddle podcast versus humans research foundation equus film and arts fest that we're here with right now doing this wonderful podcast with julianne and jay media productions versus for mental health institute for human animal connection natural life Manship institute path international polyvagal equine institute the herd institute temple ground and equine center um and and sponsored by Zoetis Equine. So I'm showing this. This is just the leading organizations coming together. It's not competition. There, a lot of these are training organizations, but it's all coming together and saying, hey, let's work together and we'll get the word out to our networks. Well, then all these people have been trained that are members, that have certifications in these different organizations are involved, then they're all like, yes, let's all get together and raise our voices. And um, and this year we're doing it May 1st through 31st. Yes. So we can go to horsesformanhealth.org and learn more about this campaign to get involved. Help us share social media posts. Help us uh, share these wonderful videos like the Hooves video that won a prize. <laughs> it's awesome. It's the ones that we're making through horses for mental health as well. Those are super powerful too. I can't, I can get through my trailer without crying because I've seen it so many times, but when you played those videos again this morning, which are also on the website, I mean, wow. If you can get through that without crying, I, I still cry You're too. a stronger person than me. <laughs> They're beautiful. I mean, beautiful. it's real actual stories of people who've been transformed through this work. And we're coming out with some new ones, so stay tuned. Yes. For May, we'll be introducing some new videos that share stories of transformation. And the idea is if we all share this, mm -hmm. share it to your networks, say I believe in these causes, support these programs. There's 65 charity partners this year who are involved in the peer-to-peer -peer fundraising component of the campaign. Um, go on and say, I want to support this program by giving a one-time donation or saying, I want to join their fundraising team and say, hey, everybody, I believe in this cause. I have a goal to raise $250. Friends and family and networks, um, please give to this cause I believe in. And then that helps spread the word. Absolutely. So, well, and I think that one of the biggest things that you're hitting on 
and I think it's a, a challenge that we all see and face in this industry is that like, if you have a horse, you already know. Yeah. You don't have to convince anybody that has a horse how powerful they are. Um, but I find myself a lot going to like rotaries or Kamanis or chamber partnerships and giving these presentations to people who have never been on the other side of the fence with a horse. And, and those are the people we need to reach to help us grow and expand. It is so critical right now. Like all the horse people are bought in. Let's get people who don't know about the power of horses. But you know, again, we go back to like all the people that show up are like, I've been in therapy for 10 years. It didn't work. It's, I've been on medication. It didn't work. I'm still broken. And then the horse becomes the one thing that gets them to the other side. And you don't have to be a horse person to right. experience that. And I just, I just really want to like foot stomp that because it's it's a critical and it's why everybody listening to this should care and should share the message. Yeah, and it gives another role and purpose for horses who've been so important in our history. Absolutely. Now, now they're saving our lives in different ways. Different ways, you know. <laughs> Helping us evolve. <laughs> yeah, and in healthy ways. Yeah. Uh, so, absolutely. Wow. Good stuff. <laughs> so fun. <laughs> I can't keep, uh, I can't wait to keep hearing and staying connected with what you're doing with your program. And in fact, likewise, going to, I get to, and some of our team are going out to experience one of the retreats at your place. Um, yes. And I'm super excited because I know it's going to be good for me personally and my own mental health and well-being and just to learn more about the amazing work that you're doing. So. Well, thank you. Yeah, I can't wait to share too and you know I mean I provide this service to veterans and a lot of people that have never experienced this work before so to be able to present what I'm doing to a team of some of the highest professionals in the industry and get get feedback on it um, you know and see like there are a lot of equine programs out there and, and you get different results and different experiences and they all have value but I feel like there's a few pieces that I've, of the puzzle that I've discovered that I think could help all programs that are open and so just like seeing I've never put it really put it out there so like is this something that is palatable is there a way we can incorporate it so that it's accessible and affordable as well and, and just get get the work out so yeah. that we can change lives yeah so. together we can do it together we can change lives that's a slogan for some I don't know what company but well I mean look there's tens of thousands of people that come here right I, to the equine affair in Ohio so a lot of people that have an interest in this and then we're going to reach the people who don't know they have an interest in this yet. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope that you keep watching. There's a great lineup for the next couple of days. Um, my website is hooves.us and Lynn's website is horsesformentalhealth.org as well as check out arenasforchange.com and so, support the Equus Film and Arts Fest too. Yes, thanks, thanks to Lisa Dearson. Thanks to Lisa Dearson. She's the, all of the godmother of the whole thing. So we're super grateful. And if you have any questions on any of the things that we talked about, please feel free to send us a message. 